responsible for their security. As long as they are with me, of course, for security reasons, we have military people around the school complex looking after their security. But would you accept there's a problem that you bring them into this school, they've been through the most terrible experiences, here they are nurtured and they are given educational opportunities like they've never had before, and then they leave here and they go back to villages that have been ruined, they go back to a northern region where there are no jobs right now, where the economic circumstances are terrible, where housing infrastructure is decimated, and these children are going to say, we were told that Sri Lanka is now unified, that it's integrated, that we are all the same. And yet, here in our homes, the situation is still terrible. That's going to be a problem. Yes, I understand the school education in those areas are uh, yet to get developed. Of course, they have started, but not to the level of what they experienced for the last seven months in Kalam, because this is one of the leading schools in Sri Lanka. But with respect, it's not just about schooling. I spoke to one child earlier who said that when they go home in just a few weeks' time, they will be living in a tent with their family because the family house was destroyed in the war. That's the reality. Yes, that I accept because uh, it would take time. But these children has all the options of continuing here with this school with us if they feel that they should continue. That op option is there and we are more than willing to give them that chance to live here, be with us in this school or any other school of their own choice till these problems get settled in those areas. Is there a sense in which you are trying to, and I use this word without it meaning to sound too menacing, but you are trying to reprogram these young people. For example, this morning at the beginning of the day, they all stand and they sing the Sri Lankan national anthem in Sinhalese, which is not their language. I have never heard any country which has their national anthem sung in different languages. And what you witnessed this morning in this school is something which is done in every school in Sri Lanka. It's done in every school in Sri Lanka, the religious activity, the hosting of national flags, singing the national anthem, singing the school anthem. So this practice in each and every school in Sri Lanka. So that does not mean we are going to do any programming, but it's a practice in every school. Brigadier Ranasinghe, thank you very much for being on Hard Talk. Thank you. Thank you. There's something almost surreal about the sight of boys who used to wield guns doing battle with bat and ball. One year of peace can't erase the pain of childhoods lost to war. As I discovered on the cricket pitch, these boys are full of energy and ambition. But they're going to return to northern villages without housing, infrastructure or jobs. Genuine rehabilitation will be no quick fix. Javier Aguilar, welcome to Hard Talk. Thank you. You at the UN have watched this rehabilitation program closely. Do you believe it works? Well, I would say it has been a positive experience for many children uh, in the sense that they come from very far in terms of what they experience during the recruitment by the LTTE. And uh, I would say it's a transitional phase. We cannot say that the job is finished, all the opposite. I think this is just the starting point of the rehabilitation and reintegration process. We do not know the exact number of children who were recruited during these uh, years of conflict. What UNICEF well, what knows... What do you think roughly the number is? Well, we have about 8,000 children who were reported recruited by LTT and TMVP. Um, and then 90% of the cases are recruitment by the LTT. And uh, however, we know very well that this is just a modest scale, uh, just a fraction of what really happened. Many parents are still looking for their children. Uh, they were recruited in the past years, and uh, they, every time we go to the field, we get uh, testimonies and requests by these parents that are still looking for their children. In the latest six months of the conflict, LTT was recruiting at least 200 children per month, and including children of nine years old, uh, of nine, age. Years, nine old. years old, there is a case like that, and other very small children. As you know, no need to explain, this is a war crime. When you recruit children below 16 years old, it's a war crime. 
One thing that strikes me is that uh, for all the care and the, the nurturing that we've seen in this school, in the end, it is run by the Sri Lankan military. And these children, after all, have been in a brutal war in which the Sri Lankan military was the enemy. Is it really appropriate for them to walk corridors where they see men in uniform and they know that in the end control rests with the military? I would say it's not a very conventional approach if you compare to other countries. Uh, what we have observed over the past weeks and months is that there is a trustful relationship that has been established against any expectation. We have to be objective. But I insist on the fact that the most important at the end of this process is that the children they can return to a civilian life and that they are with their parents and communities again. You say that the most crucial phase is yet to come when they return to their former villages and towns across the north. Do you believe that because they were former combatants, they will be monitored, they will be checked up on, they will in a sense not have been fully released by the Sri Lankan military? Uh, it's not impossible that these children will be monitored by the security forces because they have concerns. Uh, but I How think do you feel about that? I feel that we need to keep uh, discussing with the authorities and avoid that this type of situation happens. How optimistic are you for the future of these former child soldiers? Well, I think uh, it's going to be challenging. Uh, the critical point is to ensure that uh, we are able to promote uh, a trustful relationship between communities and the government services. I think it will be extremely important that these children, they feel part of this country. They have had a relatively good experience in the past months, but they have to experience exactly the same in their uh, places of origin in which they feel that the government can still protect them and the communities are able to care for them. Javier Aguilar, thank you very much for being on Hard Talk. Thank you, thank you very much indeed. The formal rehabilitation program for these young ex-combatants is now coming to an end. How has it been for you at this school? How would you describe life in this school? In the school, I was in the Valka and 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 I was in the Valka. What's your ambition? What do you want to do with your life when you leave the uh, Hindu college? This summer, most of these children will return to the north, to the Tamil heartland. They'll leave with hope in their hearts, but will it last when life at Hindu college seems like a distant dream?